You're listening to the Truck Talk with TriVista podcast, brought to you by TriVistaCompanies.com, the ultimate source for all things trucking, and sponsored by Shireman Construction, generations of craftsmanship built into everything they do. I'm Anita Massey, Director of Marketing for TriVista Companies. Thanks for joining us. Today our topic is vocational business paving. The paving industry is huge and growing, and asphalt mixtures are used to pave country roads, city streets, interstate highways, parking lots, airports, biking and walking trails, and all kinds of other paved surfaces throughout the nation. Today we'll be joined by Kevin Gray, president of ADC Paving, a company offering a wide variety of commercial and residential paving services throughout the Commonwealth of Kentucky since 1959 and also Chris Mann, Severe Service Salesman for Ool Truck Sales, one of the many dealerships within TriVista Companies. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you here today to discuss the exciting industry of paving and learn more about how international trucks play a role in this very important work. Thank you so much for having us. We're happy to be here. So, Kevin, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about your company and the various services you perform. Sure. We are a third-generation family-owned and operated business. Uh, My wife's grandfather started the business back in 1959. Her aunt ran it from 1980 to 2011, and then we took over ownership uh, in 2011. And we are a full-service paving and pavement maintenance contractor. Uh, We do a small portion of our business is, is residential work. We're trending and phasing more into the commercial realm and uh, we op- we operate three crews. We've got we've got a prep crew that does our base work, our cleaning work, our preparatory work, and then we've also got a, a paving division and a seal coating division. So, we are we are your local full service one stop shop. That's great. I know um, I saw on your website you've been named top asphalt contractor for the past five years now. So, talk a little bit about what you attribute your success to. Yeah, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's a pretty simple answer there, and it it comes down to our people. We've uh, owned the business since 2011, and we've had a pretty, you know, fierce mo- motivation to find to find the right kind of people, find good people, you know, regardless of their talent level or skill set. We're we're of the mindset that if we can find good people, uh, that we can we can train them, we can develop them, we can you know kind of create the culture that we're looking for at ADC. It hopefully stands out from you know from others in our industry locally and even nationwide. So it's definitely the people, and then it's it's preaching to them. You know, talk a lot about pride and passion, uh, and taking a team of individuals who are committed to doing whatever it takes. You know, to to be the best. Exactly, I think that's true for most companies, even yeah, here sure. at TriVista Companies. I mean, our people are our biggest yeah. asset, and we take great yeah. pride in keeping them trained and you know up to speed on the latest sure. technologies sure. and all that sort of thing. So, sure. completely agree with you on that. So, tell me, do you does ADC Paving work with municipalities and deliver asphalt for new roads throughout the state of Kentucky? We do not. We do uh, we do primarily private work. Okay. So that's you know yeah. privately owned you know, property, streets and roads. We do, we do do street and road paving. And mainly that's for, you know, streets and roads and subdivisions that may be owned by an HOA or a group or board of directors. So yes and no, not necessarily for the, for municipalities, but we do offer those services. Okay. So I guess that would include then repair work, like pothole repairs, patching. Sure. That kind of stuff too. Sure. Yeah, okay. we do. We, like I said, we're full service. We do uh, patch repair and we also do, you know, crack sealing, seal coating, striping. Okay, great. So I know um, you work with Chris Mann here at Ool Truck Sales uh, when you're specking your trucks. Tell me, what is it that you typically look for? Are there any particular features that are most important to you, axles, tires, or anything in particular? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing when, when looking at trucking or any other piece of equipment that we implement into our business, I mean, the, the biggest thing we're trying to achieve is maximum efficiencies, maximum production you know, how can we fine tune our logistics uh, in order to, to better our margins? So, and, and we've gone, you know, when we took over the company in 2011, it had historically been a residential driveway company that had only operated with single axle trucks for, for decades. So we, we took the leap into, you know, kind of the, the tandem truck a few years back. We've got a few of those in our fleet now. And we have we have recently added a triaxle to our fleet as well. So we're just we're trying to move as much material 
as efficiently as possible is, is the name of the game. Got it. Okay. Now, do you typically buy new or used trucks, or is it a mix? We we've been we've been down the road of buying used trucks, and we've we've found that that there is some value to doing that, especially you know as you're growing and cash flow you know may not be as great. But I I, I think when at the end of the day, and, and a big part of the reason we shop and buy new trucks now is not only you know they come with the warranty, they come you know that you know they're new, you know you know what they are from the factory, but then when you team with with a company like Ool and TriVista, and and you've got the the service department and the relationship there with with buying these new trucks, I mean that's that's a big piece of the brands we choose to buy is what what kind of relationship we're we're going to get. That's true, and I'm assuming that when you do come in to make your purchase from Chris, he's probably introduced you to our service department manager and our parts Absolutely. manager, so you know the guys you're yep. dealing yep. with on a day to day basis. Normally what I do, if Kevin does have a small issue or something like that, is um, I usually have his uh, truck foreman or Kevin call me himself so I can go ahead and let the service department know, hey, look, ADC's coming in here. You try to get them in, get them out. They've got a big job they got to do. And, and Kevin really emphasizes that, hey, I've got to have my truck. Because without him having a truck to lay his asphalt down, his business is shut down for that small period of time. Sure. And, you know, I've been out on Kevin's job sites, um, talked with his foremans, Kevin, his drivers. And when it came to specking these tandems out, Kevin said, I want a truck that anybody can jump in and drive. They can be comfortable. They're not wore out at the end of the day. And I have peace of mind knowing that it's going to be ready to go the next day. So that's, that's you know, goes a lot into specking their trucks, too. If a driver's not comfortable in his truck and he's ready to go home after he's been in it two or three hours a day, it's not good for Kevin. He has driver turnover. and Drivers are hard to find. So he he's not scared to spend the money to spec a truck to keep a guy in it as long as it works for him. And we try to keep him with as much uptime as possible. That makes perfect sense. And I can, I mean, I don't know a lot about this, but just uh, last week, actually, I was up at um, Navistar's Proving Grounds and I was driving an HX, mm -hmm. which I'm not a dump truck operator by any stretch, but I did get the chance to drive it um, through the rough terrain and I could see why it's important to have all of that um, technology built into the seat and the shocks to keep the driver more comfortable because yeah. eight hours of that kind of rough terrain is going to beat you up pretty good. It takes so. a toll on your body throughout yeah. the day. So I guess, Kevin, talk a little bit about what do you think about what they call driver-first technology that Navistar has introduced, um, you know, features like having controls and switches that can be easily operated while wearing gloves in cold weather, for example, or the C-loop mirrors that they've designed to reduce the driver's head turn movement. Do you feel that these features make the truck more comfortable for your drivers, and how important is that when you're looking to make your purchase? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a big piece, and Chris just hit on that, that, you know, there are there are driving jobs all over this town, all over the nation, and um, if you can't if you can't offer you know a good a good truck to a driver with with these kind of technologies and comforts and and making their their life easier while they're on the clock for you know eight to twelve hours a day they're going to go find somewhere else to work that can provide them you know a truck with with these options so it's I mean it's a huge piece and and the way that you guys have has kept up with the times and in, in putting these things on the trucks and in the trucks to to really stand out in the industry. I mean, it, it really is for good for attracting new drivers and then retaining drivers uh, long term. It, it, it goes back to what you said earlier um, of what's made you successful and get to the point to where you're at. Um, you know, you're, you're making a large investment in these trucks and these drivers, but yet you're getting the investment back from your driver to be there every day to, to perform his job duties for you. So, I mean, yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do That's to keep right. these guys happy. That's so, right. And then you get the result in the end, you're getting your job complete and having a good job and your customers happy at the end. Yeah, that's right. So you're actually getting feedback from your drivers then where they come Absolutely. to you and say, Hey, I really like this truck or I wanna ride in this truck today. They they specify that. Yeah, and that's you know, that's kinda where that's a big piece of why we kinda stopped going that used route. And you know, it's these trucks when they do get used and they they start you know, getting to their, to their lifespan, you know, they, they're hard to maintain. They're hard to stay on top of. And we, we bought a couple new trucks, uh, three years ago and had two older trucks and, and the guys that were in the older trucks were like, man, we really want to be in the new trucks. And, and you, you find, we were finding that the guys that were in the older trucks, we were turning 
turning those drivers over pretty frequently because they were having to deal with a, a bumpy ride or mechanical issues or you know just just stuff that they don't want to have to deal with day in and day out they just they want to come and drive and do their job and be able to do it so exactly yep. Yeah, and with the challenge that all industries are facing right now with driver shortages, you have to do, like Chris was saying, everything you can to keep those drivers happy. So Absolutely. it's good to hear that you're doing that. What about the interior of the truck as far as roominess? The HX is good in that regard? Oh, they're great. Okay. Yep, top notch. So you may have touched on this, but tell me again, what kind of equipment do you currently have in your fleet? Is it is it mostly tri-axle or is it just single axle? Don't we have well we have uh, four tandem axles now so we've we've totally eliminated the single axle we don't operate any single axle dump trucks uh, so we have four tandem axles and then just within the last month two months we we bought a, a brand new shiny tri-axle which has been a, a a big boost to our fleet you know it, we we went we went we started with the tandem because it was a big bump from the single axle up to the tandem as far as hauling capacity uh, at that price point, so that worked really well for us, and now you know we're seeing that we can even you know push it a little further with the triaxle to get a get a few more tons of material on the truck to to just help our efficiency. So that's exactly what it goes back to is efficiency. So so Ke Kevin's early on challenges with the single axis was he was limited to eight to ten tons on that truck, and then when he made the jump up. You know, that's eight or ten tons, and if he's on a big pour, then that's m multiple trips that those single axles have to keep making. But when he jumped to the tandem, he's now increased from eight to ten ton. He's increased that from a 15 to a 20 ton. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. Yes, it is. That, that, that's um, an extra trip that if that single axle would have had to make that he's carrying on one. So now this triaxle has increased that from an 18 to 20 ton to a 20 to 24 ton. Right. So he's almost getting two loads. He's getting a load and a half with the triaxle versus the tandem, which is a good full load, which would have been two small loads on the single axle. So he's increased his production, having his guys being effective, and he can move on to the next job. You know, It helps him out meet his deadlines because he can haul more capacity. Exactly. So the money spent for the truck purchase is more than offsetting oh, yeah. itself yes. in a very short period of time Correct. by the increased volume yep. of getting, work. You're getting you're getting three times the load on a tri opposed to a yep. single axle, yep. and yeah, you, know, you take in you know wear on your tires and fuel and the trips they're having to make back and forth to the plant, or you know it's it the the savings uh, long term. You know even you know the initial investment or the sticker shock of go, moving up to a big truck like that may may look daunting but if you if you really run the numbers and, and crunch your business numbers into it it, it makes a lot of yeah. sense it, it really helps you on your time management oh, i mean yeah. you're you're not paying a guy to ride up down the road three trips when you're paying him to go do right. one so i mean that, that's where it's at the bottom line being in the blacks where it matters so that's a good point chris yeah. everybody yeah. wants to be in the black that's, a, that's exactly right <laughs> No so, kidding. Yeah. Oh, yes. Especially in the paving business, no right? Kidding. So what about maneuverability of the international trucks? Do they perform well for you in that regard when you're on a tight job site? Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Good yeah. turning radius and all that. Fantastic. We, uh, that is one discussion we had when Kevin was, was uh, specking his trucks. He said, hey, Chris, you know, you've, you've been in the dump truck business a while, and, and you know these trucks. He says, man, my biggest challenge is, is these trucks not being able to turn around in these short parking lots. I've already laid my road base down and, and things like this, and here I am, I'm having to roll it back because the guy just rolled the base back up. Or even sometimes they have no choice but to get on the new asphalt that they laid. So, you know, that's one of the things we had to do, and I said, Kevin, look, our HX has the best turning radius in the industry. It's got a 40-degree real cut to the right and to the left. So Kevin's like, man, that you got to get me on board with that. I've I've got to quit double working myself just to lay asphalt down. So we chose the HX 620, and um, that's that's his most recent purchase, the yes, HX 620. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And it's it's just so much easier. The driver doesn't have to back up four or five times. That truck just turns phenomenal. It's it's crazy how tight it turns. And, and, th and they love it. Those guys don't have to keep backing up. The guy on the pavers not get frustrated waiting on right. him to get in it or anything like that. They can boogie and go. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about the clean cab to axle configuration that Navistar's come out with? Any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it makes it super easy to, to add additional features, you know, later on down the road if you want, you know, like a toolbox or you know, lift axles. It's just, it's just a, a clean setup that gives you the versatility to, to add on. As, as you grow.
And then I know we talked a little bit earlier, but um, the Huck Bolt chassis fasteners. What about those? Do you like? Are you a fan of those? I, yeah, I mean they're it, it's easy to use. They're durable. Um, you know, they don't really require any maintenance. And Stronger just, clamping force. Yeah, yeah, the clamping force. Yeah, so they're they're awesome. Has uh, Chris talked to you at all about um, our remote diagnostics on command connection? Are you are you a fan of that or using that yet? We we have talked about it, and I think hope, hopefully over the winter months, when we when we slow down just a bit, we can, we can dive into that. I'm I'm very interested to see what all uh, that entails, and you know, looking forward to to putting that service to work as well. It's a pretty one, powerful. One of, things, one of the things, yeah. Excuse me for interrupting, but one of the things we talked about on that sometimes uh, a, a driver doesn't give a good description of if there's a fault code or something going on with the truck. And with us talking with Kevin about this, this will allow Kevin to say, hey, Chris, pull this up and on command. Not really sure what's going on. He's complaining about all the power and the lights on or something. And, or Kevin can even look at it himself yep. on his phone. It's visible there. And he can say, hey, look, it looks like there's something wrong with the fuel water separator. Maybe we need to change it or something like that. And it goes ahead and gives us a heads up, too, here for the service department or for something that Kevin's guys can even change in the field really quick. So it's you know, to minimize his downtime. Exactly. So do you have other trucks besides international brand in your fleet currently? We do. We have two, two of our older tandems are Mac. Okay. Yeah. So the on-command connection, I know it's an all makes uh, diagnostics tool, so that could even help mm -hmm. with his, yeah. with your Mac trucks as yeah. well. So Absolutely. definitely something to think about. So I'm just curious, I know Chris has done a bang-up job for you on the sales side of things and, and taking care of your needs that way. What about just servicing your trucks? I know we've done some maintenance for you. Have we done a yep. good job, you know, maintaining your trucks? And have we helped you with mobile maintenance at all when you're on the job site? Or? Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's why we keep coming back to, to, to Ool and, and doing business with Chris. It's, um, and that, that's how we want to feel from all of our our, our vendors and our, our people that we have relationships, whether it's on the equipment side, the trucking side, the material side, you know, we, we want to be, you know, we've got to be a team and we got to work together and we got to have that, you know, mutual respect and understanding that, Hey, we're in this together. We need, we need partners in this industry for us to be successful. And that's, that's, uh, that's why I'm pretty loyal to this brand. That's great. Love yeah. to hear that. Yeah. So I guess overall you would say, how would you rate the international uh, HX models against the other comp they're, competition? They're very, they're very strong. We've, I mean, we've demoed several other the the, the competitors out there, the big name players, and mm -hmm. yeah, this truck is it stacks up right there with them, if not if not better. I mean, I, I we've absolutely just been impressed with them. Great. So, how many years did you say you've been buying international trucks? I guess it's. I mean, going back, I don't know, five years or so. We bought we we got a couple single axle. Uh, used trucks off the used fleet back in I guess it was 14 or 15, yeah. 16, and then and then we we purchased the new tandems back in 2017, and then the recent triaxles. So we've uh, we've been and, and you know when when we went from the single axles uh, and switched to to internet, you know the old single axles were the you know the GMC top kicks or the Fords. So we hadn't we hadn't really married with with a big player like a you know a Mac or a Kenworth or a international and we we checked them all out and this is this is this is the one we we were drawn to so glad yeah. to hear that so i guess you kind of answered my next question what is it that uh, keeps you coming back for more international trucks i guess you just feel like the qualities there I do. the service that you get here from Ool is yeah. is good that's and our and our drivers love them. I mean, that's that's another big piece, and we talked about that. So it's, yeah, you put those three things together, and it's it's a pretty good formula for success. Exactly. Well, guys, we're nearing the end of our time today. Is there anything else you'd like to add that we didn't discuss? I, you know, I don't. I kind of going on what I just said. I, I think I think a lot of people in the industry may not be as familiar with the international brand you know a lot of people that have been doing this for generations and it's it's been passed through their families or their dad did or their grandfather did it you know it's everybody talks about the mac or the kenworth or the peterbilt and it's like these these trucks are as good if not better than than those today so it's like if if you haven't if you haven't demoed one or you haven't taken a look at a serious look at, at getting into this international brand i think it's it's worthwhile for sure great appreciate you mentioning that 
Well, Kevin and Chris, this has been a fun and informative discussion, and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day, certainly, to educate our listeners on how the international truck plays such an important role in the paving industry that you're in. So thanks again. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yeah. Anytime. Enjoyed the discussion. Glad to have you. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Truck Talk with TriVista podcast. You can find more podcast talks or general information about TriVista Companies and its many dealerships at TriVistaCompanies.com. Until next time, be safe out there.